G'day everyone, Viv here. I hope you're all keeping well. Welcome back. Um, I want to build a set of Tau Terrain. One of our players who hopefully will be playing in uh, some of the 40k battle reports has a Tau army, so I thought might start building some uh, themed terrain sets for different sorts of armies, both for Fantasy and 40k, being the two big popular game systems that I'm sure we'll have uh, coverage in battle reports for. So I thought I'd start off with a terrain set for two reasons. One, I get requests... Uh, fairly frequently, maybe once every three weeks or so for um, some Tau ter tutorials. And secondly, I've never built a, a Tau terrain set before, so I thought what better opportunity to put the camera on and um, sort of learn together. I'm going to uh, sort of use a lot of images from Google, um, uh, people like uh, Adam from Greenleaf Terrain who's done uh, uh, a bunch of uh, uh, Tau sets, the guys from uh, Dream Spirit Wargaming um, who've done a bunch of uh, ter um, Tau terrain sets and uh, various images on Google. So uh, let's take you through the first part of uh, making some uh, generic round shapes. Uh, that seems to be fairly popular amongst uh, Tau uh, sets that I've seen. So I'll show you how I'm rounding off the corners. This uh, set of tutorials will be uh, reasonably long, I'm assuming. Normally I like to film tutorials that are very quick, very easy, very simple. Um, I don't like to do things over multiple parts or multiple days or weeks. It just gets too confusing for me. There's so many things going on in my life that uh, I have a tendency to leave projects for a long time. But this set needs to get done. So uh, hopefully over the next week or two weeks we'll uh, see this Tau set uh, come to life. And you can watch along with me and hopefully learn a few things. So thanks for tuning in. Let's get on with the first part. So let's have a look at the first couple of things we're going to need. I'm using some high density polystyrene. Mine is just uh, 25 mil thick, an inch thick. And uh, I've got some various round shapes here, a small bowl, a plate, a smaller plate. You could use anything that's round. Like I said, we're going to start off by building just some round generic shapes that have a, a, a rounded edge. This is fairly straightforward sort of stuff. So I'm going to grab a piece of foam that I've cut beforehand and just uh, align something on there. That's too big. Let's do another one of these little shapes. So it's just a matter of tracing out with a texture on the foam that shape. Now we're either going to cut this with a knife. I'm going to use a hot wire table for mine. Um, if you don't have one, I'll show you. Uh, uh, just cut it out with uh, a, an extendable knife. Make sure you've got nice sharp blades in there and I'll show you uh, both processes. So this is my hot wire table that I built from just from scraps of wood hanging around the place and uh, some uh, nichrome wire. It's hooked up to a, a battery charger. Maybe we'll have a look at that in a separate video. Now, I'm not massively good at cutting out shapes, uh, round shapes with this hot wire cutter, but uh, I'll do this one and then we'll have a look at doing it with a knife. This doesn't need to be perfectly accurate. We just want a, a rough round shape to start with. So there we go, it's not perfectly round as you can see I've shaking a little bit but I'm sure as I get more familiar with cutting round shapes, which I'm bound to do on this project, I might get them a little bit rounder. Let's have a look at doing this with a knife in case you don't have a hot wire cutter. So here we go, there's our pattern traced out over the edge of a table with a retractable knife. We just want to start sawing through this. Now you don't need to worry about being too accurate to begin with. Just get close and then start to come through. The only thing you need to make sure here is that you're trying to hold the knife as sort of perpendicular as possible. And then just slowly saw away at that foam. This is probably easier than a hot wire cutter. There we go, there's our shape cut out. I'm just gonna check the edges. You can see on this one here, how it's not exactly sort of perpendicular. I'll just try and clean up some of that because we do want it to have a, a relatively flat surface on the edge here. I'm happy with the rest of this. So let's uh, have a look at how I uh, round off the edges like on this piece here, it's pretty simple. So what I've done is I've taken a piece of uh, PVC pipe. This is a 40 mil pipe. Obviously they come in all different sorts of uh, sizes. This is just what I had laying around and I uh, put it in a vise on my bench and cut out a little piece of it. This is basically a quarter of the pipe. Um, and to that I've just inserted a piece of uh, sandpaper. So I've got this uh, nice round shape 
which I can now use to make sure that uh, my uh, bevel on the outside is a nice round shape. And it's just about an hour of slowly going through and sanding this. Make sure you've got sandpaper on hand because as the sandpaper starts to wear, it will start tearing the foam like this. So just go slowly. You don't need huge amounts of force. Just let the sandpaper slowly work away at the foam. So I am being careful, trying not to press the top of the, uh, the form into the top of the foam. If I did, I'd end up with that shape, which is nice, but then I start putting a, a, a line across the top of the foam, which I don't really want. So I'm holding it sort of where neither the bottom of the form or the top of the form are touching the foam. So I'll go ahead and finish this off. It generally takes a couple of minutes to do each one. So we'll come back once I've rounded this one off. There we go, I'm happy with that. It's not 100% perfect, but uh, we're doing this by hand. So there's our round shape and uh, our bevel along the edge. Now, I'm sure there's other ways to do this. You can start by beveling off the edge with a knife first and then coming back with the sandpaper. But uh, I like to use this form here because then I know that the bevel on every one of my pieces is going to be very, very similar. So uh, that's how I'm going through making these uh, round discs there, in my opinion, the, the, the starting point for a, t a towel set. So I'm going to make a whole bunch of different sizes of this. So there we go. There's the start to the towel terrain set. Just making a bunch of these round shapes and beveling off the edges. That does make a fair bit of mess, as you can imagine, with all these tiny, tiny little bits of foam. So I'd suggest wearing a dusk mask and doing it at a place where you can sweep up afterwards on a concrete floor or something like that would be best in the garage or something like that. Um, so there we go. I hope you follow along. If you've got suggestions or ideas or different ways of doing something, please post them in the comments below so we can all learn together. Like I said, this is my first How Terrain set, so uh, I'm going to be borrowing a lot to, uh, or, or, or using a lot of inspiration from Google and other artists that have made uh, what, I, what, I, what I like in a How Terrain set. But you might have some other ideas, so please pop them in the comments below, link uh, other things if you've seen them, and uh, I'd very much appreciate that and love to learn from other people as well. So I hope you stick with it. Um, like I said, it's going to take a little bit of time, but we'll get there. Thanks for tuning in. See ya.